Hi, it's Anthony from carplaylife.com and in this video I'll be looking at the new U2 Apollo Android AI adapter from Autocast. So keep watching for my review. So it seems every week there is a new Android AI box launching and today we are looking at another adapter from Autocast that joins two other similar dongles that I looked at recently, the Apple Pie Mini and the Carlinkit T-Box. All of these I look at as second generation Android AI boxes. All three of these adapters simply plug into your existing Apple CarPlay USB port and it will take over your display to give you a full Android operating system. From here you can download and display a vast library of Android apps from the Google Play Store and run them directly on your CarPlay display. Right now these boxes are the only way to get content from apps such as YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video running on your CarPlay display. You can also run apps like weather, car system data apps, browsers and email on these so-called AI boxes too. In the box you get the U2 Apollo adapter itself. On the back it's marked Apollo E for UK and Europe SIM compatibility. It connects to the CarPlay USB port via its detachable USB-C to USB-A cable and there is a USB-C to USB-C cable for modern CarPlay USB-C ports. And finally, there is a paper manual that lightly covers how to install, use and update the adapter, along with a brief introduction to its slightly different menu interface. Looking over the adapter itself, just like the previous two second generation Android AI adapters, there is the same SIM and TF card slots that span both sides of the USB-C port. There's no additional USB-A media ports, so you have to use the TF card slot for adding any local media files. Like the Apple Pie Mini, there are two status indicator lights on the same side as the SIM and TF card slots, which will indicate power and update status. Whichever cable you choose, both offer a generous length of around 30 centimeters, which is more than enough to locate the dongle in your center compartment or glove box of your car's interior. In the car, I plugged the U2 Apollo adapter into my CarPlay USB port. Once booted up, the Android 9 main menu mirrored the similar interface to the CarLinkit T-Box, although this autocast appears much sharper and it's squared off icons and has a few alterations to its home screen. The first notable difference is the now playing media playback panel. This panel persists on the home screen and it unfortunately cannot be removed, but it can be dragged around to other areas of the page or moved to sub pages to remove it from the home screen completely. On the side of the menu screen, you have the persistent side dock. This displays the time, SIM network strength, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections, and the last three accessed apps. And at the very bottom, there is a shortcut button to invoke Google or Siri Assistant. And there's also a button to switch between default page view apps or view the entire library of apps in a smaller tile format for easy access to more apps. At the top of the home screen is a wide gap that currently houses the floating navigation menu. Compared to other adapters, this version is a little bit more minimalistic with just two function buttons to go back and another one to go home from within any app. Both of these buttons have additional functionality. Holding the back button also toggles split view and holding down on the home button will toggle the active app menu to enable you to close them down. This floating menu persists and cannot be removed. It will fade away after around five seconds, but as soon as you tap anywhere on the screen, or interact with any of the apps underneath, this floating menu will return again and generally just get in the way and sometimes require constant relocating around the screen. There are many different apps already loaded onto the U2 Apollo from Google Maps, YouTube, Chrome browser, YouTube Music, Netflix, Waze and VLC. All of these apps work fine once a stable data connection was given to the dongle. You can give this adapter an internet connection in a number of ways. The best is by inserting a data SIM inside the adapter. This method supports up to 4G LTE and it allows you to use both CarPlay and Android apps simultaneously. The second method is to use a personal hotspot from your Google or Android device. However, using an iPhone, you'll be limiting to choosing either using the adapter for wireless CarPlay or for use with Android apps. It will not allow you to do both because the Wi-Fi connection used for the hotspot will be fought over between Android platform and wireless CarPlay. There are a few additional alternatives. These require either connecting to another phone's personal hotspot, using a MiFi device, or if your car has built-in Wi-Fi, you can connect this dongle to its network instead. 
Once connecting the adapter to a mobile data or Wi-Fi connection, this is where the whole platform starts to open up. From here, you can download any compatible apps from the Google Play Store app. Here I try SkyGo, BBC iPlayer, ESPN, and Amazon Prime Video. Disney Plus wasn't compatible with this particular dongle and could not be downloaded from the Google Play Store, but I was able to sideload the APK and that worked just fine. All of the apps I was able to download ran just fine on the 8-core 1.8GHz Snapdragon 450 CPU with 4GB of RAM, and its 64GB of storage is plenty enough for all the installed apps I wanted to use and any media that I wanted to store. Should you wish to use more storage, you can increase the capacity by inserting a high-capacity TF card for up to an additional 128GB. The Speedplay Android app supports both wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, connecting to your iPhone or Android device. You can also install the Android Auto app directly onto this dongle should you wish to do that too. Wireless CarPlay took a little time to get paired and for my phone to display CarPlay, but just like the CarLinkit T-Box, it did not want to auto connect to Wi-Fi profile after pairing over Bluetooth. And I had to manually enable it for CarPlay showed up wirelessly, which took around five to seven seconds, which is pretty good time. Just like the CarLinkit T-Box, it didn't want to auto-connect initially to the Wi-Fi profile after pairing over Bluetooth. A few things you can check here. You can either check that auto-connect is enabled on your phone as well as on the dongle. Once in CarPlay, the display over wireless was sharp and clear. Everything from navigation, music streaming and calling all behaved as normal. At the time of recording, I couldn't test how this dongle performs over long-term use. I wasn't able to test Android Auto wirelessly either. Inserting a TF card with test samples, I was able to play back all my audio, video, and image files, either in its own player or via the bundled VLC Android app. On playback, there were no artifacts in the video playback and everything played smoothly. The Autocast U2 Apollo retails for $339.99 from Amazon. You can check out my links below to learn more and to buy yourself one. Between all three of these second generation Android 9 dongles, this flavor of Otacars feels a little bit more refined in its menu and appearance. Its minimal floating menu does make it feel much less annoying to use, yet it still requires constant altering between various Android apps and whilst using CarPlay. Personally, I would have preferred a consistent side or bottom menu during Android apps and then go full screen for CarPlay and Android Auto because each have their own return home button that could easily take you back to the Android interface. Performance wise, it is exactly the same spec as the two other second generation dongles that I've reviewed. So there's no improvements here in terms of performance, other than it is capable of performing well in the majority of apps you want to use in the car. Like most Android AI boxes though, unless you have a decent internet connection, this can heavily limit the general speed of the apps that need it, such as fetching location data and directions in navigation apps, logging into accounts and fetching media content from various video streaming apps. Although it's four gigabyte of RAM and maybe enough, you still might struggle with page loading and general clunky Android performance, unless you downloaded content such as maps and video files directly onto the dongle itself. These second generation AI boxes are pretty much mirror images of themselves. So when it comes down to choosing which one is for you, you have to look at the menu interface, it's casing and cooling, bundled apps that are already stored on the actual device itself to save you the time from getting them yourself, general tech support, and most of all, price. The menu system of the Autocast is definitely more refined out of all the three. However, switching between Android and CarPlay can always be a little bit of a painstaking experience sometimes with all of these dongles. So if you're looking for a second generation Android 9 AI box, then if you can get it at a competitive price, the Autocast is probably the best out of the bunch. All right, thanks for watching and I hope you found some value in this video. If you have, please leave us a like down below and let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the U2 Apollo from Motocast. You can check out all my other CarPlay Android dongles up in the playlist on the top left. Hit that subscribe button down below to catch all my future content and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, bye.